The Scarlet Gate Inn contains mature and or dark themes, humor, and situations which may be unsuitable or too sensitive for some viewers, and in particular, not at all meant for young audiences. Please remember the characters are not their players, and vice versa. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to game two, everyone. Yay! You're not dead. That's cool. It's always handy to not be dead. So, <clears throat> let's do a little recap here. Uh, we left off with the group traveling with a caravan towards a village known as Knotted Hill. And this caravan is a merchant caravan, mostly ran by the Vistani, or a group of Vistani. And they hired you out to help with some harpies that had been following them for a while and, and attacking and carrying away um, merchants and, and people of the caravan. Although they didn't quite know it was harpies at the time. It wasn't until you guys arrived and they hired you, you were able to um, help defend them and defeat the harpies. And you also found that there were harpy eggs, or what appear to be harpy eggs, that had been planted on the caravan itself, thus explaining why the harpies themselves were attacking. They tend to be ambushers. They don't like to come down from their habitats if they if they can't help it. So, uh, after defeating that, you guys decided to uh, kind of join in the celebration. The, the Vistani, the merchant uh, caravan, decided to break out the good stuff and and have a little bit a uh, little bit a little bit of drinky drinky and a nice big feast to celebrate the the fact that you're you were going to make it to Knotted Hill um, uh, without being attacked by harpies anymore. And that's always something to celebrate. So, that night, um, everybody sort of tried to kind of interact a little bit more. There were some hurt feelers. So, for one... Um, Bishop shot Diz in the ass and was feeling a little bad about that. Um, Lala also shot somebody in the butt with a firebolt. That would be Dusk. Uh, so Bishop went to go talk to Dusk about it and try to tell her, like, hey, look, it's an accident. An accident has happened. Um, maybe you should go talk to her and, and let her know that everything's okay. And Dusk was like, are you kidding me? Um, don't you tell me what to do. And Bronwyn, I believe, was on Dusk's side on that. Like, she's a big girl. She can handle it. It's like, fucking whatever. So Bish went to the tent to talk to Lala for a bit and let her know that things weren't a big deal and started doing her hair because that's a thing that he does. Uh, and Diz came over to try to, to, try to be diplomatic. Meanwhile, Dusk and Bronwyn... Um, went and uh, sat by the campfire and, and chatted for a bit. Uh, Diz brought wonderful, wonderful hair products and pins and ribbons and stuff like that and helped spruce up Lala's hair. Um, Bish was the hands, but really, um, he 
he's terrible at it, so this this helped a lot. And decided to join the others, and they would chat, and everything seemed like it was going okay. And then I forget what did Bishop say to Dust to piss her off. Something she says she was uh, gonna go, you know, sleep in a tree because Bronwyn was making her very uncomfortable, as Bronwyn do. And then That's you not were the like. And Bishop was like, "Ha ha! You live in a, you sleep in trees. What the fuck's up with that?" <laughs> I think Rez showed up about that point because he had in our pass out um, session in our blackout session. Um, he also asked uh, how far they were from Waterdeep, and they're about two weeks away from Waterdeep. Uh, Dust got pissed, and then Bronwyn just kind of like, "Is there anything you can't say, Bishop?" That doesn't make you an ass. Something to that effect. And Diz is trying to be the peacekeeper. Um, I think that's where we sort of left off. Did we oh. have any other major revelations? Bishop did ask what happened to Dust's family. Uh, oh because yeah, to Dust's She family. said the reason she was going to sleep in a tree was because it was off the ground. And you could see more. And she lost her tent when she lost her family. And that's when she stormed off. And Bishop's like, what? Well, Fucking no. Get mad at me. I'll run into that emotional landmine. At the break of dawn, the camp starts to, the caravan starts to strike and uh, their camp and, and head down the road towards Knotted Hill. Everybody still seems to be in really good spirits. Some people are kind of shaking off way too much wine the previous evening. Uh, so I'm going to need Bronwyn and Bishop to roll Constitution saving throws. Unless anyone else did heavy drinking that I'm not aware of. Dope. Bishop's gaining a level of exhaustion. <laughs> Dumbass. Bronwyn, yeah. you shake it off. Party Great. girls used to it. <laughs> but I totally didn't even drink that much. <laughs> Party like girls me. don't get hurt. You don't, you don't have hangovers. Um, as you guys start rolling up your your bed rolls and, and packing up your packs, um, Marvel comes over to you. Hello, my friends. Are you about ready to go? I suppose. Your friend there looks like he is uh, not feeling so good. You see Bishop just kind of like sitting with his head in his his face and his knees, just like, ugh. Just throw him in the back of the cart, he'll be fine. Yeah, I think he just partied a little too much. He's, like, talking loud on purpose. He literally lifts up a hand and flips you off. <laughs> uh, Riz, correct? Yes? Pointing at Roz. Roz? Roz is, Roz is fine. Ah, Roz. Um... <laughs> I noticed that you, uh, you seemed that you uh, had a little bit too much to drink to last night, I think. You seem to be fine now. You passed out in the middle of the night and then woke again. Are you oh, all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it happens. It's fine. No biggie. All right, well, if you need to see uh, somebody who might be able to make you something that will keep you awake if you get tired, just let me know. They have people that make that kind of stuff? Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. It's not very appetizing. Uh, we usually have coffee, but uh, it usually gets drank pretty quickly. Ah, coffee, right. We have more of an herbal tea, if you want to call it that. Doesn't taste great, but it uh, keeps you awake. It's all right. No biggie. Uh, your sister, Diz? Is that your name, miss? Yes? She cannot. Are you feeling all right? Everything... Uh, Comfortable? I know that sleeping uh, on the wagon, on the blanket, may not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but I figured it'd be better than the ground. She's going to look to uh, Rez and just nod again. Quite deserved, I see. She's not much of a talker. I see, I see. That's quite all right. We don't, uh, we don't judge here. If you have something to say, say it. If not, then sometimes it's best not to. Uh, Miss Lala, yes? Then it's fair. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling alright. 
Your hair is uh, it's very different. I like it. It's, uh, it's got lots of uh, extra things in it. Oh, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> I love that. Just quiet. Oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's adorable. Um, I'm finally looking to uh, desk again. And you, miss, you are uh, feeling well, yes? I'm all right. I don't uh, mean to pry. It's certainly none of my business, but... Um... Did she have her hood on? No. It's, okay. it's out. Yeah. Uh, I do know that there is uh, sometimes a silver axe traveling this road. Uh... Do you want me to cover up? It's completely up to you. I just thought I'd uh, let you know. Just so you didn't get caught unawares. You don't like uh, people with, uh, how do you say, animal parts? For lack of a better term? Or heavy fangs? Well, I don't have a hood or anything, so... But I can I can put a blanket over my head. Of course, of course, of course. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I, I, I uh, certainly am not going to tell you how to live your life. Although, if we do run into Silver X, uh, we were kind of hoping you could maybe talk them down if we need to be, or handle them if they get troublesome. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely handle them. Good, good, good. Mr. Bishop, uh, are you joining us? And he just, like, kind of waves, still his face and his knees. He's okay, well. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm not. Don't. I need to go. And he gets up and just like stumbles across <laughs> like, behind a rock. And he, tried, and he tried to give me that shit. Eventually, the caravan. I heard of that. Fuck you. But I'm gonna come over here. Give me a kiss, you bitch. <laughs> Ugh. Stop, I'm sensitive to that shit. Just hearing it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> anyway, um, eventually that whole fiasco ends maybe five or ten minutes later on the road. And it's a breezy day. It's a breezy autumn day, so quite a bit of wind whipping up here and there and then lulls in it. Enough to give you chills, especially if you uh, have uh, short sleeves, such as Bronwyn. Why you got to single me out like that? Uh, because Dusk has no sleeves. Oh, I may if... be cold, but I look fabulous. Those of you who don't have sleeves, make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> no. Sorry, what? If you don't have sleeves on your character, or um, don't Fashion have a lot of don't have a lot of clothing. Oh God. Have, I, oh God. Uh, totally if you don't sleeve. have a if you don't have a lot of clothing to keep you from you know kind of shivering. Uh, so dusk, you're gonna gain. You're gonna gain two levels of exhaustion. Two. <laughs> yeah. Son, get some sleeves, would you? And for some reason, the chill is just really getting to you, and you're just shivering while you're walking, and you have your arms kind of folded down yourself. But her tattoos look great. They do. Mm -hmm. Show off them biceps, girl. Fuck Mother Nature. <laughs> Bishop. Uh, Walks over to Bronwyn and walks next to her. Hey, um, if this goes wrong, make sure she doesn't kill me, all right? No promises. Why'd I, why'd I know you are going to say that? You're of no help. And he kind of jogs up ahead to dusk. So he's walking next to you. You're, you're irritated and you're cold. Listen, uh... I don't mean to um, uh, upset you or nothing. I I, I didn't know about um, didn't know about your family last night. I'm sorry about sorry about bringing it up. I didn't mean to. She kind of crosses her arms and looks away, but she's not. She's not like acting hostile. <laughs> But it's warm as normal. Well, you know, I was thinking, um, 
if you don't find your family maybe right away in Waterdeep, um, after me and Lala uh, kind of collect our reward, it's not like we need to pick up any big jobs anytime soon. So maybe we could, you know, help guide you around the city. You know, cities kind of kind of what me and Lala are, are, are more familiar with. So, you know, if you want, you know, it's whatever. It's just a, it's just a big village, right? That is pretty not accurate, but you know, um, has no idea what a city is like. It's a bit more complicated than that. It, it, it helps to have a guide, and I don't know, maybe Bronwyn knows. He, he kind of looks back at Bronwyn, but I, uh, he turns back to you. That girl gives me a heebie jeebies, quite frankly. I like her. I mean, her personality is a acquired taste to some. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> One perception check to see if you can hear that. <laughs> Fucking pull that shit. No, I really like the idea of her just being like, fuck you. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> He kind of rolls his eyes. But, um... I, I don't know. She She's up to... That book of hers is kind of unsettling. What Something book? Rez told me last night. She keeps a... She keeps a, she keeps a book with her. That's, so does um, Lala. Lala's always reading a book. Yeah, it's a different kind of book. It's like a magic book of some kind. And not a book of magical spells. I mean, something about it. Sure, some gentleman's name in it who we're going to take in for a bounty. And then let him go. Said, if anything, if he continued to do bad stuff, something bad was going to happen to him. I think she put a curse on him. Maybe she was just waiting until she heard about him doing other bad things so she could go hunt him down? So that way she'd remember the name? Maybe. I don't know. His name, as he wrote it, apparently appeared on his shoulder in a mark like magic was being done oh, like carved into him yeah yeah and it read something said something last night that he, he was freaked out by her like her book wanted to kill him or something like that I didn't really get the the full story are you just trying to make me not like her as much because I'm bonding with her and you don't really like her because this sounds really made up it's not made that's not it at all I'm just saying be careful all right you know, I, there's plenty of things to like about Bronwyn. I mean, I mean she doesn't talk. She talks. To you? <laughs> she's nice to look at, uh, and she's good in the fight. Diz she's really talk. good in the fight. Diz is great, and and not because she doesn't talk, but Diz is just sweet. You know, it's kind of when she does talk, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, if if I could take, if I could take like. The quiet part of Diz and like put that <laughs> into Bronwyn. I think we get along Damn a lot it. better, person. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on a minute. Okay. I got it. Can you just Res hear the cackling coming from the other side of the caravan? Just. <laughs> just Nothing where nothing nothing there. Just 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 a cackle. Oh That's my weird. god. We're not being tracked by gnolls. Sounds like a no laughter in the distance. Uh, you don't know we're not being tracked by gnolls. Huh? You don't know we're not being tracked by gnolls. I mean I suppose we could. You've got no senses. But you do, right? With the, the ears and... Uh, my hearing's not that much better than yours, but... I, uh... I can track things real well with my sense. Like smell things? Yeah. It's from my mom. That's really, uh... That's pretty neat. And you see him kind of, like, stretch and then, like, check himself and then kind of put his arms down. <laughs> she rolls her eyes. Don't worry. Beyond the alcohol, I can't smell much out of you. Great. I, I'm sorry that, um... Sorry I irritate you. That's... As long as... Uh, 
I wish I had something to say to that, but it's just what you are. <laughs> you can't. It just comes off as like, well, you're a fucking irritating person. You can't help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's I know like... that's not what you meant, but I know. <laughs> His eye kind of twitches for a moment. He takes a deep breath and he flicks the beads on the side of his hair, just like, says something to himself, mutters. What was that? Nothing. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. Anyway, um, you know, Lala seems to like you plenty enough and she's a pretty good judge of character. Most of her. Been a few times. She looks over at those beads for a sec. What are those? These? They're, um, kind of merits. <clears throat> the, the order I'm a part of, you have to complete certain trials, and every trial you complete, you, um, Will you get one of these beasts? And being the uh, the village girl, she is, she reaches over and she grabs not not grabs them, but like just to just to touch them. And of course, one of them burns you. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't go touching them. What are you doing? Give me your hand. And he takes her hand and he kind of looks like, shit. That's gonna blister, isn't it? What the fuck? One of them silver. All right, one of them silver. Why do you have a silver bead? Why do I have a copper bead and one made of bone and wood? Why are we pick nitpicking that? All right, it's just a material. Silver's used in a lot of things. All right, I didn't think you were gonna go fucking touching it. She's just kind of like, Ugh. Uh, uh, hey, Diz, Diz, and you see him kind of wave over to Diz. What do the Diz do? She's kind of. Perk up. You gonna trot on over? Yeah. Yeah, a little clump, tail wagging. Clump, 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 clump. Oh, Dust yeah, got, got, got a silver burn on her hand. You can take a look at it. That's fine. You give me hands. <laughs> when she does that, Bishop just kind of like walks off and just like walks back to act like he's checking something in the wagon. Just kind of, you can tell he's embarrassed. Uh, Lala, what are you doing? She's literally walking with the book in her face. <laughs> Bronwyn, what are you doing? Walking next to her to make sure she doesn't trip over anything. <laughs> <laughs> just in the back, Rez? just guiding her around. Rez, just what are you doing? She's about to walk into something, she just grabs her shoulders and shuffles her about. She doesn't even look. Yeah, just like grabs her by like the sleeve and just. It's adorable. A little, a little bit of a pothole there. There we go. It's the laying on the cart, just staring up at the, at the woods, above. Um, Bishop uh, hops up on the on the cart. So, um, what's your deal, man? Like full disclosure. Yeah. Uh... What do you mean, what's my deal? I mean, you keep falling asleep and stuff. Right now, I'm staring at the... I'm just laying here. There's a big difference. I know, but, like, you fell asleep last night. It was weird. And then you passed out when we... You fell asleep last night. I mean... Like, when we first met you, you just kind of passed out. You got some kind of... Did you get knocked in the head or something? Uh, I mean, to be fair, I think we've all been knocked in the head a few times. And you see him just kind of roll his eyes like, all right, man, let's just try and talk to you. Be that way. You see him start <laughs> shuffling off the cart. All right, all right. So I guess I know that thing about your... And he motions towards his... <laughs> yeah, all right, don't, don't be pointing. Towards his... <laughs> oh? Bronwyn's like pervert tingles, like senses are tingling. What's going on? <laughs> Some, something about dicks? 
Dick, you say? Dick, you say? Uh, when I was younger, I was trying to look for a cure for my sister. She could walk with her normal legs because as I said before, you know, the whole animal thing, not natural, it's magic. So, uh, came upon a thing, did a thing, found a thing, and now I pass out all the time. Didn't find a cure. Kind of shitty, kind of, kind of a liar, kind of a liar, that, 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 that thing I found. All right, you're going to have to, what do you mean by thing? Define that thing you found. I don't know. I'm not going to go that far in my life, okay, listen, I don't exactly know what's going on with you, or... Um... I, uh... I think you know quite a bit. I just... I used to have a regular <laughs> heart. All right. It is, lot. it is, I won't lie, that is quite... That, that is not normal. Yeah, I know it's not normal, all right? Is, does it hurt? I mean, no. Yes, yeah, sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. Will you? Like, oh, you have to. Oh, wait a minute. What? Do you what do you look at me like that for? Do you, a, do you have like a time limit? He like looks around. Whoa! S- stop! Stop! And he like covers your mouth. Shut. Mm. Thomas Balls, you're a fucking talker. Takes his hand off. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. okay. I, I, have to, I have to be wound up. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, no, that's not what I mean. Like, I mean, that is what I mean. I mean... I know, I know what I saw. I, I definitely know what I saw. It was, it was definitely not what I was expecting to see, even with the, you know, whatever. But anyways... <laughs> Uh, so, uh, when I was younger, I don't know, I ran into this, uh, uh, well, he called himself, uh, an, uh, an angel, I sure as hell didn't act like one. I mean, he was kind of nice and all, but, you know, bastard. But either way, it's done, can't really do anything about it. Been trying to search for a cure ever since that, and hopefully finding some way to figure out how to, you know, turn my sister at least back to normal. So let me get this straight. You have some sort of curse that makes you fall asleep randomly. Sure do. I mean, that's pretty bad. I trade you. Uh, would you? I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah, I would. Trust me. When you can only go for about a week at a time before somebody has to wind you back up. So, you know, you don't die. You know, before Lala, I didn't really have anybody. I, I can't do it myself because I can't reach. I'd always have to be traveling with somebody. Mostly, um, mostly didn't really care for that. I mean, I usually have to pay someone to do it and hope they wouldn't screw it up. And sometimes they would. And I was just. Before Lala, I didn't really have anybody to, you know, kind of take care of it. So it's nice to have, um, <laughs> nice to have somebody to, uh, to trust. So, you know, really wherever Lala wants to go, I go. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of just like falls quiet, like trying not to be a dick. I get the feeling you're trying to, Keep your tongue held before you decide to say something weird. So I'll just go ahead and spit it out. I don't have anything. Just, I mean, okay, well, I have plenty to say, but like, you know, that's nothing really important. And I feel like it would. Well, out with any, it. Go on. No, it's it, fine. It would add any substance to the conversation. You know, I'm trying to, you know, not blurt out the first thing that comes out of my, you know, brain. D- didn't I see like feathers shoot out your butt or something? That's not. T- the feathers, right? That's listen. That was the one thing. Is that because of the angel? Let's talk about the, no. That was the no. Listen, just don't worry about that. That that wasn't supposed to happen. That was an accident, magical illusion. You know, I'm a wizard woo, with the fingers. You know, I pull out my book. 
Uh, All right, then. This book is another thing I can't really figure out. What do you mean? I don't know. I'd open up the book and uh, I'd start flipping through the pages. And out of. Uh, as I'm flipping through the pages, uh, only about a, a page or two are actually legible. The rest of it is just a scripture that makes no sense to me at all whatsoever but you see uh, the thing about this is uh i don't know over time it just seems to translate itself interesting oh, I, uh... what's what's the part you can read what, what is it it's the spells that i can use huh it's pretty handy things like uh you know fire bolt you know, a little mage hand that i can pop out every now and then you know, just like wiggle my hands in a little. I've, I've always wanted to do a mage hand. Like, if I could do mage hand, then I could probably, you know, one, take care of myself, too, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Hey, he looks uh, around, take care of myself. <laughs> and just poofs. What? It's just going to poof and disappear. <laughs> gonna... You know, I. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm surprised I didn't think of that. I am full of ideas, my friend. And he puts his hand on Rez's shoulder. Stick with me, kid. I got all the good ideas. It is certainly an idea. I will keep, I'll keep it close. I will. Actually, I will keep it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this book down, though, for now. All right, well. Hands. I think we're uh, I think we're coming up on uh, on where we need to be. And uh, as he mentions this, you, you do notice that over the horizon is a town. That you're approaching. And uh, Marvo uh, hops off the lead wagon and kind of walks back. Is everyone uh, doing all right here? Dusk, you look a little cold. Do you want the blankets? I was actually going to ask if I could maybe buy a cloak off you or something to help with my ears. Sure. My mom did sure. that, but apparently she said it never helped. Well, we can, uh, we, we've got a little bit of clothing. Um... Looking for anything in particular? Just a cloak? Something just with a hood. Sure enough, sure enough, sure enough. Uh, how about the one for uh, two silver? Yeah. I... I don't carry silver. I see, I'm sorry. Can you, can you break a gold? <laughs> I can, I can. And the rest into copper? Sure, sure enough. So he uh, takes your gold piece and kind of Hops into one of the wagons and takes around and jumps out with a freshly folded cloak and a small bag of money. So it's sorry, it's a it's a little heavy. <laughs> he gives you the pretty yeah, uh, which I believe is, um, yeah, I think it's eighty copper. <laughs> he has to hand back to you. Thanks. No problem. Uh, as you approach the village, you notice that there are people at the front gate. The entire village itself is walled off um, by uh, a log fence that are kind of sharpened at the top. So it's kind of its basic village defense. And the entrance that you're heading towards seems to have uh, about four or six people in front of it. Um, and you see that there are banners that they're holding. Two of them are holding large sticks, staves that are about maybe 10 to 12 feet in length with a banner that's blowing in the wind. It's a green banner with a silver axe emblem on it. And uh, they're <laughs> waving and uh, appear to have a basket uh, with something silvery and shiny in it. And they're standing next to a stall. 
great. Uh, let's do a check here. Uh, Diz, what are you doing? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. You walk it along? Rez, Bronwyn, what are you two doing? Start with Rez, what are you doing? Uh, I'm still sitting on the cart watching the village. Okay. And uh, can I see like the like the dude with the silver? Yeah, aspect? yeah. You're, you're you're walking, um, and you see, you know, because you're walking with Lala, you can see the the banners up ahead. Oh, so she'll go up to dusk and be like, "So, these are your your friends from earlier." Yeah. Dusk is having a clear anxiety problem. Maybe you should. Hop in the wagon. I'm gonna see on site. I'm gonna use a potion, but uh, it's not gonna protect me from silver if they try to if they, they do anything with it. But it might deter them from trying anything. Are we able to see the silver axe or no? Um what is your passive perception? It should be in the bottom left side of your character sheet. Underneath your skills. No, that's passive wisdom. What the fuck? No, it is passive wisdom perception. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yes, you do notice um, the banners flapping in the wind. Uh, and then I whistle. Uh, like a specific whistle that maybe like only me and Diz would be able to recognize just to try to get her attention. Mm hmm. Diz, you kind of perk up and. Uh, Lala, you hear this whistle, and really, and it kind of breaks your concentration. Um, <laughs> Come Jesus on. Is calling his steed back. <laughs> to me, my steed. To Wait, me, I mean, I'm the one who whistles to call my sister. Come on, girl. Come on. My God. Your mic's She's a little um, a little staticky, Bronwyn. one. A little reset there. Better? Yes. It's so weird. Um, so, Lala, you snap out of this as well. Uh, Bishop um, is kind of looking the opposite direction, isn't paying attention, and when um, Rez whistles, he flicks him. What was that for? Trying to, trying to get Diz to come over here. Just yell at her, man. She's not responding. <laughs> Normally the whistle would be enough, but she's not responding. Oh shit, is that any triumph over there? In the cart. What's the problem, man? Oh shit, is that silver axe? I'm trying to cover her body up with something. Like yeah, get blankets, yep. Start covering her her lower half with blankets. Now she just looks like she's riding in the front of the cart and she's really happy. She's gonna wave her arms like a ghost. You're good, dear, and don't move from this spot, okay? Moving on the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Diz. All right. Bishop kind of rolls off the cart and lands on his feet. He takes out his rifle and starts walking up to the front. And you notice that as you approach, um, the caravan has the beginning. You're kind of in the middle of the caravan. The front part of the caravan and the people that are walking aside have kind of rushed up closer, and you see the silver axe smile at them and wave, and they they're handing them something, and you realize they're handing them pe whole pieces of silver. I swear. Oh man, that's fucked. Uh, you want to join them in the wagon, Dusk? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Yes, buddy! She did take See? a potion, though, so her ears and tail are <laughs> gone. But... Silver. So as you approach... Um, Lala, Bronwyn, Rez... And Bishop. I know where Bishop is. Where do you guys want to stick near the wagon where Diz and uh, Dusk are hiding? 
Uh-huh. I was just gonna sit next to this. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes, welcome to Knotted Hill. We, the Silver Axe, have, uh, are on a campaign, a crusade, to uh, spread the good word as the Vault Order and, uh, and essentially help protect the lands from lichen and night creature threats. As a gift and a good fortune, we have decided that anybody entering town today will be given one silver piece. There you are. That's, that's, that's a gift from the Silver Axe to you. <laughs> so uh, funny. Oh, I'm not. No, Rez is not laughing. Oh, okay. oh wait, no, Rez is not laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's going to turn immediately to Dusk and be like, guess who gets to pay off their debt today? I think Dusk is hiding. Oh, well, is, is Dusk hiding or is she in the wagon? No, I mean, she's she sitting in the wagon so she doesn't look suspicious. Okay. But she's... Gotcha. Like, not eagerly up the front of the line to take money. My res would be like, guess who's gonna get to pay their debt back today? What debt? Oh, I'm sorry. I must be mistaken. I guess you could just take the silver piece then. Oh. Slow. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, at dusk on dawn, or dawn's on dusk. Man, that's gonna fucking fire. Dawn's on dusk, dusk on dawn. Yeah, I guess you can just take it for me. May as well. That's right. Never think you can out drink me ever again. Uh, deception check from Rez. Come on, I deserve uh, it. Get some effort into it. Oh no. Do it. Oh. Let's see. That was good acting. So, uh, I guess this is your lucky day then, is it, sir? There is. That's what, two silver pieces for me? I suppose. <laughs> he puts two silver pieces in your hand. He hands a silver piece to Lala. Lala, what do you do? Uh, she just takes it. And hands one to Bronwyn. Bronwyn, what do you do? Uh, I guess she'll take it. Well, don't everyone sound too excited. I'll take your silver pieces for you. <laughs> hands one to Bishop. He looks at it. And then kind of flicks it back at them. You got a problem with us? Yeah, I fucking do. Oh, come on, I would have taken that. You gave uh, those of us who actually do real hunting for a living a bad name. And this little uh, this little act of yours of goodwill, just so you can have your own little private checkpoint without being hassled. I know exactly what it is. Fuck you. Here, give me another silver piece. I'll throw it in your fucking face. <laughs> And one of them gets in his face, and the other one puts his hand on his chest, pushes it back. Now, now, we're just, uh, everybody's got a lot of emotions. It comes down to it. We all want the same thing. Yeah, I don't fucking think so. Why don't you, um, go ahead and pass out the rest of silver to the, to those two ladies right there. Hello, ladies. That hands one silver to, uh, to Diz. Does Diz take the silver? She's going to take it and give a nice smile. And I suppose this silver piece has already gone to your friend over there, hasn't it, miss? Yeah, I tried to drink him under the table. Well, I'll tell you what. If you don't tell, I won't. Uh, and he I'm, I'm here. flicks a coin towards dusk, and it's flipping end over end in the air. I'm going to sure that thing. Uh... <laughs> I got dex. Make a dexterity I, save. I gotta dodge that shit. Yeah. Um, so, Rez, make a dexterity check. And Dusk, make a dexterity save. Dusk, do you have... Um, um, you have disadvantage due to your exhaustion. Oh, no. So, we'll roll that one more time. <laughs> You're just trying to get me hanged.
Um, you manage to kind of duck out of the way. Rez, you dive for it before it hits the ground, but you miss. And you get it anyway. You limey bastards, why are you making me crawl for this free money? Come on now. Is this an actual checkpoint? What's up with you? Come on, I just said it was mine. Why'd you give it away? All right. It's fine. It's fine. Have a lovely day. Don't let us keep you. And the caravan continues. That's awfully suspicious. That was fucked up. Can you believe them? I think I'm going to have to invest in a pair of gloves that cover more than just my palms. Question. I can sell Go them. ahead. Yeah, I put major armor on myself right now. Right now? Yeah. You roll into town, and uh, the caravan kind of moves off to the side and parks along the side of the wall. Marvo jumps out, and you see uh, two gentlemen walking towards the caravan group, more specifically Marvo, who decided to... Uh, walk over and talk to the rest of you about what happened at the front gate, but then he stops and says, hold on. Is a village elder and the sheriff. And these two gentlemen have a, kind of a kind of a bluish skin and white wispy hair, but they don't appear to be old. Um, and they walk over and Marvel says, well, it looks like you are still in charge around here. And the uh, gentleman who seems to uh, be the mayor because he has finer clothing compared to the one next to him, who looks a lot like him, who has some sort of um, some sort of uh, badge on uh, on his uh, on his short coat. Got a lot of nerve coming back here, Marbo. You didn't think we'd uh, just forget everything that happened last time? Bygones be bygones. I believe I won that card game fair and square. And he slowly steps towards him. And he's like, you son of a bitch! Ah! And they hug each other. <laughs> Seriously though, my friend. We come in to a checkpoint with a silver axe and realize you were a sympathizer. Oh, no, 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 no. no you don't, you, you're mistaken. That they're definitely not doing anything with the town, but when they're outside the walls, there's not exactly a whole lot I can do. Don't worry, when they're inside the walls, they're well behaved. It's just that uh, things have been a little hectic around here, so it's been kind of hard to keep an eye on them. So you um, have some protection with you this time. Uh, yes, uh, let me introduce you. Uh, this is a group of adventurers. D does your group have a name? I never really asked. Is that a thing? I, I didn't know y'all named your groups. Adventuring groups having a name? Yeah. At least they're famous ones. Perhaps you are uh, still kind of new. Uh, not well established yet. Yeah. Is your brand? Yeah, I don't do any stupid fucking names. That's dumb. Yeah, that sounds a little corny. What are we? That's because, like, I am cool. <laughs> 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 He's wanted a name. Pink haired teenagers like, we want names. Yeah, cool names. Well, Dusted too. Because well, I mean, she I goes by Dusk. literally contemplating obviously, the idea right now. Obviously, Dusk likes the idea of nicknames and shit. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Mr. Bishop here, uh, Miss Dusk, Miss Lala, Miss Brownwin, uh, Mr. Rez, and uh, Miss Diz. Well, Mr. Like yeah, have fun figuring that one out. Oh, don't. That's going to get weird. Well, thank you very much for uh, protecting my friend here. Lord knows he needs it. Did you have any trouble along the way? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, harpies. We think. Uh, we think the court actually put eggs. Harpy eggs on uh, one of the caravans. Court. Oh. They're getting more bold every day. You know, I think they're having some activities around here, but I, you know, my brother can't nail it. Cassian, how are you, my friend? Cassian just kind of gives a solid wave. Actually, if you have some time, I'd like to speak with your adventuring group if... Um, you're done with business with them. 
Yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, I do believe we are. I believe I owe all of you some money. Is that correct? Yes. Bishop like takes his hand out and just, like points to it. Uh, what did we agree upon? That, uh, two gold a day. Five gold a day. I was just joking, my friend. I know it's five <laughs> gold. Everybody like, gets uh, ten gold to add to their character sheets. And while you're talking, the uh, group of silver axe uh, people walk into the village, and they all stop and kind of look at all of you as you were talking to the the mayor and the sheriff. They kind of give Bishop the stink eye. Eyes forward if you want to keep them. Are you going to be a problem? The sheriff steps forward and Bishop, like, I usually am. Ask this one, he points at the broad one. She rolls her eyes and shakes her head. She's like, no, please. <clears throat> well, um, well, I appreciate uh, your work being completed and probably wanting a rest, which we're more than welcome in the town. We could use your help. Do you have a few minutes to listen? Yeah, let's see why not. I assume we'll be spending the night here anyways. I mean, we have a really nice inn. Um, we have an inn known as the Rested Head. Rested Head Inn. Very nice amenities. Uh, soft beds, big pillows, free breakfast. We also have a tavern um, that serves some really good food. And if you're interested in picking up some supplies, I know adventures are big on that. There's the Traveler's Sword and Shield, Kelly's General Store, and the Knotted Hill Open Market, which, I mean, Marvo, I'm assuming you're going to set up shop. Of course, my friend. That's why we traveled this way. A few days here, maybe a week, depending on how we're feeling. Right, well, uh, I won't keep you. Private business. It's not. It's just adventure business. I see you. All right, everyone, start unloading. Let's uh, get to the open market and start setting up our wares. Marvo and the caravan and the Vistani start unloading things from their wagons and carrying it across town. We've been having some disappearances. It really, I don't mean just many disappearances. We One disappearance, really. A girl who is um, daughter to one of the more wealthier members of our established community has has disappeared, and we suspect foul play. We didn't have any visitors, and she disappeared last night. Now, my brother, the sheriff... Uh, by the way, I'm so sorry. I, I did, haven't introduced myself. Let me just... He pulls up a script. Let me just look at my script here and see what my name is. Oh, my God. There we go. I can't seem to remember my name. Give me one name. second. It's like, it's like somebody wrote this this morning. Anyways... My name is Godot Windswept, and this is my brother, Sheriff Rashi Windswept. Uh, anybody who would like, so you're trying, their species doesn't necessarily pop out at you unless you can achieve a check. So, uh, Arcana or Nature check if you'd like to figure out who or what these things are. Even Backwater figured it out. <laughs> My parents traveled far and wide. Let's see bishops in the know. Let's see. <laughs> Everyone immediately knows what's going on. <laughs> it's <laughs> the bishop. It's a kind of dark elf or something. Um, no. He kind of looks and shakes his head. The rest of you, um, just kind of look at bishop and roll your eyes. Uh, these are air Genesai. and Genesai are half elemental people. And there's fire Genesai, earth Genesai, water Genesai, and air Genesai. Um, and they tend to have a touch of elemental ability and their appearance reflects as such. Um, you've heard of 
water genocide being able to swim and breathe underwater. Uh, the air genocide maybe having just a slight breeze around them at all times. Sometimes they can float. We um, we had we had the silver axe come in a few days ago. Or, while we have no recourse to remove them from the town, having them in town, well, it causes trouble. It causes problems. They're 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 rabble rousers. How much do you know about the silver axe? Enough to know that we don't like them. But they fit in a well. What was that? That is nothing. She's she. <laughs> okay, never mind. They fit three per well pretty well. We um. We try to keep a peaceful community here, and zealots like them don't meet with our with our ideas of a peaceful community, if that makes sense. They're spending a lot of time in the tavern, they're talking to lots of people, they're going door to door, they're not doing anything, they're not doing anything against our law or the laws of the land. They haven't started any fights. You know, they, they stand outside whenever they see uh, travelers come in, they hand out silver coins for obvious reasons. Of course, people take them. Um, and they've been handing out silver coins to people in town to, to not only ingratiate them, but to also, um, you know, check. It's it's a powder keg. It, it's a problem. It's gonna it's, it's gonna go off soon enough. And we've been keeping an eye on them until last night when Juniper disappeared without a trace. Last anybody saw her was her going up to her bed at around eight o'clock. She still lives with her parents. She's about nineteen years old. And the next morning, she was gone. No note, no sign of struggle. The window was open. And there were some footprints outside her house. But that's it. And nobody's seen her since. And now, we need to spend time looking for her, questioning people. It's just that um, can't keep an eye on the silver axe and keeping the town's peace all at the same time. We're, we're stretched thin. We only have one sheriff, but with adventurers such as yourselves, who could be, you know, hired to help things out. I mean, this this is a, the kind of thing adventurers do, right? They look for disappearing village folk and keep an eye on rabble rousers, fight monsters, right? For the right price. So which of these tasks are you asking us to take care of? Do you want us to look for the girl or keep an eye on these folk. Well, we'd like for you to look for the girl. And of course, um, if the silver axe gets out of hand, should my brother bro blow his whistle, and Rashi holds up a whistle, then maybe perhaps you can come assist him. There are six of him and one Rashi. What do you think? To what extent do we take care of them? To the extent of d incapacitating them. You defend yourself, right? If they they come to you with ill intent and, and threat of death, then we'll still try to incapacitate them. But, but if you can't, you know, what happens, happens. This is a little excited at the thought of, we might get to kill them. But by no means are we advocating that you you must kill them. But just play by ear. You, I, I can pay you. Um, and he kind of looks at his brother and Rashi's like, "Don't look at me. You're the one who's hiring them." Um, say, um, five gold a day. Yeah. And uh, and a reward if you do find Juniper. I'm sure that I'm sure their parents will will gladly pay you. They are the wealthiest folk in town. I mean, I don't hate the idea. I don't get more money. I don't really want to stay here too long because I need to get some water deep. Bishop kind of like nods. He's like this. 
she's got she's got family she's trying to get back to and um I, I don't know. Um, group huddle, I guess. Is that a thing we're doing now? Damn. Name. Huddle around the cart so Diz doesn't have to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can touch the cart. Look, uh, I kind of just go where you guys want to go. I do have to get Dusk to her final destination. Me and Lala picked up a contract. And Bronwyn picked up that contract, but... A couple extra gold here and there and a possible reward. We got a nice payday here. Well, I can get myself to Waterdeep if you want to stay here and collect gold a day. No, no, that's not. Yeah, that's not. We a ain't good doing idea. that. No. Not for the reason that he's probably thinking, but if there's Silver Axe here, what's to say there's not dozens more of them along the way? You being by yourself just doesn't sound like a good idea. I'm sure you can punch real hard, like Rez said, but you're still going to be severely outnumbered. I understand that. I'm just really, really worried. I'm more worried about the girl, because her, her family's missing her. It's kind of like the situation now, and I want to help. There's a lot of people here already on it. Yeah, but with Silver Axe here, is that going to make it much easier? No. He did say they were stretched pretty thin. How hard are they really searching for her while they're trying to watch their backs with these guys around? Yeah, they don't seem very nice. Well, that's what my dad would do. Just check her Discord. Alright, well maybe we do need to move on. You know. If only for... Can she just walk off towards the blacksmith shop? Yes. I'll be right back. Uh, oh, all right. Oh. What? Where are you? Okay, bye. Uh, well, no, not bye. Fuck. This is going to run away <laughs> to rest and bye. Well, we can't just... Lala, can you... Lala, go after her. Fuck. Okay. He just follows her. <laughs> Just running after her at full speed because you know you got like half the stride that she does. <laughs> does she Look, still have her uh, nose in the book while she's running? <laughs> by a little potato. Uh, potentially. Where is the blacksmith shop on the map? It doesn't really matter. Sword and shield. Oh, that makes sense. Um, so I'm assuming you book it across town. Yeah, she just takes off. Okay. Haphazardly, because that, that's a good idea. All right, I don't know what that was about, but um, what do we say? We stay here, we see if we can just work it for, what, three days at the most? And if we don't find anything, we don't find anything, we move on. That's 15 gold apiece. That's fine with me. Bronwyn, and there's a reason I stuck around with you. You understand modern adventure and economics. And you're all right to look at. Oh. I just wouldn't keep talking. Perfect. I feel the same way about you. I'm glad we're on the same page. Great. He just kind of like shakes his head. He rolls his eyes. Rez, Diz, you wanted to help people, right? And now what you're about? Not really. This is going to, like, slap his shoulder, like... <laughs> I'm about helping you, okay? I mean, people. But you're about people. I never said I was about people. We're about people, slap again. Ow! Alright, well, it's decided for group pink hair. Better look next time, 10 piece. Alright, zooming on over to the Traveler's Sword and Shield, Dusk. What do you do when you reach the door? It's closed. Is it locked? No. I guess I'm opening it and going in. Inside is a standard, standard blacksmith shop. You see a forge. You see pieces of armor. And you hear somebody upstairs um, as you open the door. It kind of knocks some uh, a, a, a blacksmith bell around the door. So you just... Just a moment, just a moment, I'll be down. Hold on. 
you hear the creaking of wooden steps as he steps the way down a blacksmith with a bald head and a burly red ginger with a little bit of white streaks beard and a blacksmith apron. Welcome to the Traveler's Sword and Shield. How can I help you today? And she's like looking around all the corners and stuff. Did is there is there anybody else here but you? Um That young lady there, Lala, entering in. <laughs> now she's like, oh god, I've lost my mind. Oh, he just picked up more books. She doesn't say anything. Well, I'll be honest. I thought I heard somebody open the door earlier, but uh, when I came down to check, I didn't see anyone. You don't think someone's hiding down here, do you? I... Hold on a sec. He takes a, a heated sword from the forge with a, it's got a red hot tip and starts looking around. Uh, that that won't be necessary if it's who I thought I saw come in here. Well, if one of your friends is uh, snooping around here without letting me know, I'd prefer to know about it. Is anyone in here? No, perhaps not. Can I, can I sneeze? You may. It's going to sit in my nose. Um, you smell the hot coals and, uh, and the smell of hot iron and steel. I don't know if I'd breathe in those particular fumes, young lady. It's, uh, it's a forge after all. Although I enjoy the smell, like, after so many years, I can't smell much of anything. To put hot sauce and everything, quite frankly, just to get the flavor. That's, that does a uh, number on my stomach. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm sorry. I, th I thought I saw someone I knew coming in here. Somebody I, I should be keeping an eye out for? No, he's he's a good person. I just thought I saw him. No question his morals. Just uh, you want me to keep an eye out for somebody who has a particular description? Uh, if you see a taller man with... Dark hair, uh, magic user, L let me know. Sure, they will. I appreciate if it. If I see you. How about you, young lady? Can I help you with anything? And he kind of kneels down to Lala. He kind of just narrows his eyes to the fact that he, he just knelt down. But she shook her head. She's just like, no, I'm with her. All right. Then, well, if there's nothing else I can help you with, I'm going to get back to uh, preparing something upstairs. And tell your friends about the Traveler's Sword and Shield. Oh, we will do. Have a good day. And he turns around and, and starts walking back upstairs into his loft. No! You did Lala dirty with that doodle. Oh my god. <laughs> Just looked over. You need his act <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it has to hold her up or something. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> Anatomically correct. Name. I love hair flip. Eh. Yeah. Worst. That's getting saved. That's our first group doodle. That's fun. Okay. That's adorable. That is adorable. Go. All right, Lala. Um, Dust, do you do anything else? No, she just uh, decides to walk of shame back to the group after running off like a lunatic. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind me asking, who did you s thought you see? Is it someone important? I thought I saw my older brother. 
Oh, okay, okay. Mention? No, 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 okay. Uh, you right back at the the rest of the group. Everything, uh, all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I... You ate something wrong? No, I just thought I saw my, my older brother walking into the shop. You mean here? Yeah. Well then, I suppose that sells it. If your brother is hanging out around here, perhaps we should hang out around here too. He You're looking for your family, right? Me. That's definitely not my brother. He wouldn't just walk away from me. Well, all the same, we should be sure. I think the group decided we'll spend no more than three days here. No more than three. We'll probably be less. Check some things out. Make sure your brother's not here. All right, fair. All right. And trust me, hopefully by that time, if uh, we get an even faster ride out of here, we don't have to walk our way there. Maybe we could hitch another ride somewhere else. So it's worth waiting around. Everybody in agreement? I suppose so. All right, then. Who wants to tell the mayor? Y'all the chatty time. You do it. I pass out. <laughs> Fucking you move. passed out? <laughs> Didn't even do a roll for it. I'll do a roll for it. No, you Natural can 20. pass out. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought the timing would be great. Uh, uh Diz, is he alright? Alright. She's going to just smile happily. <laughs> Did you just fall at, on the ground? Was he in the cart or was he on the ground? Uh, I'm not sure. He, uh, he was on the cart. I have to go feed my dog. So, okay. Uh, as you can hear him, he's he's bunny pounding. <laughs> right now. He's a happy boy. Yeah, All right, bear right back. Okay. Brown, you're the crowd pleaser. Why don't you get over there and tell him we'll take the jab. All right. Uh, the mayor and the brother are kind of conversing privately with each other, and they stop and turn when you approach. Have you come to a decision? Uh, yes. Uh, we do have somewhere to be, but we agreed that we could uh, help you guys out for at least three days. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. It sounds uh, sounds good. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, my brother has some some badges for you, so that way you can walk around town, and ask questions without, you know, people not trusting you. Although, I still might not trust you. It might help just a little bit. And he comes over with tin badges that he just kind of hands to you. Does They're test them first. Stuff. She's like, great. Oh, I thought I went by myself. Oh, okay. Do you want to... And he walks over and hands them each to everybody. Badge. I don't need no stinking badge. Kind of puts it on his lapel. It's like playing dress-up as a child. And she begrudgingly pins it to her, feeling really silly about it all. Bishop looks a brown one. Are you Sheriff Brown one now? Careful, Jen. She knows witchcraft. She'll handcuff you and make your dick fall off. I swear. I've seen her do it. Well, what good does it do if it's fallen off? I don't know. You throw in a potion or something like that? Curse of ex-boyfriends? Or girlfriends. Whatever. All right. Anyway. Well then, you can uh, find myself at my uh, manor, the Elderman's House, which is also our town hall. If you have any other questions, Rashi will probably be about town himself. And do be careful of the silver axe here. You don't want to start any fights. She just looks pointedly at Bishop. You hear that? What? What? 
Just saying, don't go start in any fights. You don't go start in any fights. Just kind of looks away and takes a, takes a takes a drink from his water skin. I say we go to that place right over there. He points at the Wicked Wrench Tavern and get somebody to eat and drink. So everyone head to the Wicked Wench Tavern. Didn't you have enough to drink last night? You could never have enough to drink. You clearly can. Bahamut, give me strength not to piss with this horrible witch back into the fucking goddamn before times with ammunition. Ammunitions was still floating. Grant me strength, Bahamut. He like gets his hands off his gun. Uh, so Bishop's going to go to the Wicked Wench. Where does everyone else go? Do they go the same or do they go to other places? He promised me a meal, so I'm going to fucking go collect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dusk isn't stupid enough to be caught by herself right now because her potion's only got two hours. Uh, Rez is still passed out, yes. And Diz, what is Diz How doing? How are we going to get Diz around town? Yeah, Diz can't really move. She's just kind of... Like, the three of you stop and turn and look back at Diz. <laughs> like She's just sitting there sweetly, just smiling, oblivious to everything. All right. Uh, I, I don't think we can properly hide her. I think she just has to come out as a centaur. Welcome back. Like, uh, Rez, do you suddenly wake up? <laughs> uh, and he's back. Uh, where, where, All where, right. Where Good morning, sunshine. Oh, where am I? Who are you? Oh. oh. Where this is where is just gonna hand like say it like that. <laughs> oh. Welcome back, Lala. Look, we need to figure out something for Diz. I don't think Diz can hide who she is while we're in town this entire time, unless somebody has some sort of magic butt-hiding spell. Does she want to try one of my potions and see if it helps? I don't think it will, but... You like to take anything of yours. Thank you, though. It'll only last for two hours anyway, so... I can just sit here. You, you, you guys go, and you guys can go too. Well, you're now, gonna now, now. to eat, and you can't just stay so in the wagon for three days. Besides, if we get in a fight and uh, I get my nose broken, I'd rather you be there. Just whistle like Rez did, and I'll come galloping. Well, no, we're not gonna whistle for you like like an animal. Yeah, it seemed a little insensitive. Yeah, it is. She, she is part animal, but the, but I we, hey, we whistled to each other before the animal thing. It was so we knew where we where each other were. She whistled back. Oh. Regardless of that, we're gonna want Diz to come help us. So I say, let her come out and be herself. Right? She shouldn't have to hide anyways. And if Silver Axe does come to start trouble, it'll give me an excuse to start punching them. Two goblins, one fireball. Is there a well around here? Just asking. There is. I saw it on the there way is. in. I, I saw. I watched it specifically. <laughs> yep. There's you a big fit, well right there. You can probably fit about three or four in there. It'd be alright. Again, and I'm the one that's scary and evil. Jesus. You are. I won't let that go. These people are specifically harassing my kind. I'm pretty okay with uh, doing what I need to do. Diz, I say you come out. But it's your choice, ultimately. But I, I, I think that we need to stick together as a group. You know what? Even if we don't necessarily stick together, you shouldn't be sitting in your car all by yourself. You know, there's, there's there's shopping to do. Would you like to shop? Everybody loves shopping. Actually, I do need to go to the leather worker shop. 
But we can do that after we eat. It's gonna be like, <gasps> clothes! Yeah, see? He likes clothes. Diz, why don't you come on out of there? As well. Somebody should get, you know, something with some sleeves on it. I have a cloak now, so... Diz, do you get out of the cart? She, she's going to slowly get out of the cart. She's going to, like, look around all paranoid. Nervous centaur girl. Tr trotting around. Shaky little deer leg. legs. <laughs> See, there you go. Come on. Let's get something to eat. Let's get some food. All right, so Bishop... Uh, Lala, Dusk, and Bronwyn, I know, are, are, oh, actually, I'm not sure about Lala. Uh, Bishop, Dusk, Bronwyn are what? going to the, to the, to the tavern. Lala, where are you going? Are you going to the tavern, too? Yeah. Okay. Rez, Diz, where are you going? I don't know. Where do you want to go, Diz? She's just going to shrug and like, look around and squeak out clothes. Where's the clothes at? The general store or the market? You might find clothes in either location. Go to the general store. Okay. So you head to the general store. And uh, as you walk in, pull up my nose here. Uh, a half-elf woman who appears to be putting uh, more stock on the shelf turns around and notices you. <sighs> Welcome to Kelly's General Store. Oh, hello. Hi. Don't see many um centaur. Yeah, she's she's a uh, disease fight. No, no, I didn't mean anything by it. Everybody's welcome here. Welcome to Kelly's General Store. How may I serve you today? Uh, that's a good question. Just plan it on looking around. Plan it on looking around. I see. And she kind of leans closer on the counter. You, um, are you buying? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking around to buy something if something catches my interest. Something with long uh, sleeves, please. Sure. Sure. Make an inside check, the both of you. Does... Jesus, poor Rez. All right. <laughs> uh, Rez, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy something. Uh, Diz, even though you asked for that, you got the feeling that when she had leaned in and said, are you buying something, she meant to imply some heavy innuendo. As if there was something else you were here for, maybe a specific kind of purchase that you were looking for. Well, is, this is a trafficking location. <laughs> you don't know. You're like, yeah, purchase. Yeah. Goods and services. Whatever. Yeah. You got I I I'll, I'll happily look. Let's see general story. Here we go. Well, feel free to look around. Um young lady, I have some dresses that I think will fit you just nicely. You don't know if you want to trim the skirt, but for a friend. Sure. Wait, sure. Miss, can we come a friend? I'm sorry, your your friend. Uh, I was ask, I'm, I'm asking Riz, can we call her a friend? Dusk. Yeah, the general store lady. Oh, Dusk! I'm getting the long sleeve for. Why am I gonna get long sleeve for the general store lady? No, I thought you wanted a long sleeve. I don't know why. I figured the fur was enough for you. Jeez, I don't know what I was gonna. Excuse you. Fur on your ass. You know, feel free to just look around. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, it, if you need need to need to browse by yourself, that's fine too. I'm, I'll, I'll be behind the counter here. It's it's really it's no problem. 
Um, make a <laughs> make a perception check, the both of you. Holy shit! All right. Ultimate insight. She has like this face on her, or this expression on her face the whole time. Just like that. Oh, it doesn't show it. Like her eyes are going like the direction with a cat-like face. What? <laughs> so you guys will be shopping while you're shopping. Come to the tavern. Wait. And the tavern. What was that? Wait. Is there a, like a shopping list item website I can look at to see if there's anything I want to buy? There is, and I meant to put it together. In the meantime, I will give you the general items list. Um, it's going to be kind of a, a hit and miss on what they have here. They have some pretty basic stuff, but even like airship is on here. They don't have an airship. Feel free to look. I mean, I can't buy an airship. Right? I think an airship will fit in the general store. Just carry it out. It's just sticking out of the roof. There's just a massive hole. <laughs> I'll take you want to enter the raffle for the airship? The prize nobody gets. Spend over 100 gold and you'll be automatically entered into the a raffle for an airship. <laughs> hey, hey, Diz, do you want this antimatter rifle? <laughs> Good lord. TNT Beyond it. There's too much shit in it. <laughs> anti man a rifle. All right. So, <clears throat> Dusk, Lala, Bronwyn, and Bishop enter into a very quaint little uh, tavern and restaurant that has um, a few patrons uh, already sitting here. People getting food and having drinks and having conversations. And they look up and see you and the the bartender smiles after pouring somebody some wine. So I'll be with you in a moment. They walk over to you. Welcome to the Wicked Wrench. How can I help you today? Food. Food we have. Would you like a table? Yes, thank Let me show you to a table. And... You get uh, led off to uh, to a table, uh, kind of right by the window, where the sunshine can come in, and a relatively large uh, hearth with a with a fire in it, keeping the the whole room warm. Would you like some menus? Yes. No, you may not get a camel. And they hand you a menu, and it's got basically only like five items on it, which is soup of the day, um, a uh, a rare steak, a kind of a vegetable salad kind of dish, um, a turkey leg, and uh, eggs and ham. Did they only hand or hand them one menu or a menu for everyone? Menu for everybody. Was that fe- uh, almost every day we have fresh, fresh baked bread, yeah, fresh baked bread. Yep. It's about that time that the silver axe members come through the front door and walk God across. Damn it. <laughs> Glad busy <isn't> there. <laughs> Welcome back, gentlemen and ladies. Please have a seat. And again, they eyeball Bishop and uh, walk over to a table in the back. Uh, while we decide for food, can we get something to drink, please? Yes, absolutely. We have wine, we have ale, we have mead. Um, we also have you know, fresh, crisp water. If you're just looking to hydrate yourself, we also have uh, chilled milk as well. Milk sounds pretty good. I'll get some water. We also have chocolate milk if you're interested. I love that. I right, want chocolate. chocolate and milk. 
the gods, you are backwater. Yes, they put chocolate and milk. It's amazing. She wants a chocolate milk. Get her a chocolate milk. She's getting, like, furio excited. <laughs> like, really? Oh, and for you, miss, looking up her on one. Water, please. I'm not a child. What was that? Hmm? Nothing? You don't have to be a child to enjoy the wonder that is chocolate fucking milk. Do you not like things that taste good? Is things yeah, tasting good? Childish? And then she turns to Bronwyn. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had chocolate before, but it's really freaking good. Or have you just, had chocolate? It's just chocolate. It's just simmer down. Just, it's not just, that amazing. Just chocolate. Wow. Okay. Right? Can you believe her? They all say this while Lala's kind of huffing that she did not went with the chocolate milk because it was that it was mentioned before after she picked water. And Come back not with the... double down on it. What's wrong, Lala? You have that look on your face. Yes, nothing. Lala, if you wanted chocolate milk, why didn't you order it? We've tried this talk before. <laughs> I'm talking about, I don't want chocolate milk. I asked for water. All right. All right, fine. Just don't be all yeah. sulking all day when you get mad because you didn't get chocolate milk and it comes out like in the evening. Like, I didn't get chocolate milk this morning. And I said, I understand that, but we had the opportunity. This is like the time you wanted to order that, that bacon wrapped thing. I forget what it was called. And I ordered it, and then you went with just like the, the pasta or something like that. Do you remember that? You were mad for the entire day. Nobody was mad for that. That was the day. That was the day he almost got arrested the, the third time. Do you remember? That's my fault. It wasn't. I'm not saying it was your fault. Okay, we already had that argument. I'm sorry I even brought it up. I'm sorry I implied it was your fault, but you're in a mood. I'm not sulking. It's fine. All right, fine. <laughs> I hate it when you're fucking like this guy. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. And so I'm like, ready to order. <laughs> it comes back with drinks. Bishop takes his chocolate milk, puts it in front of Lala, takes her water, puts it in front of him. Now you can't fucking say nothing about it now, can you? Extra pouty now. <laughs> Go ahead. And what can I get for you? And at this point, the silver axe stands and walks over. Excuse me, uh, I'd like to pay for this table's meal. Is that all right? Um, I don't think we asked for any such charity. That's all right. We'd be happy to do it. We're just, uh, kind of starting to come over and make ourselves a little more familiar to you, since you seem to have some animosity towards our organization, and probably some due to some misunderstandings. Uh, no thank you. I couldn't help but notice that your friend, who isn't with you right now, with the pink hair, has a hindquarters of an animal. <laughs> it sounds like your eyes are broken. Why does why do you even care? The server acts is about keeping the balance. You see? The balance I, with I honestly don't care. I'm here to eat my food. <laughs> Brown's just sipping her water like ooh, ooh, it's just spicy. Have some crisp water if you need to deal with that burn. Understand, understand. Uh, you clearly have some some misunderstandings, some ignorance about our organization. I think your ignorance is uh not having proper manners. Can you leave us alone for trying to eat? We certainly will. We just have uh, Bye. Just a question. Bye. We're looking for someone who's missing. Bye. Love yes, we're son. aware. The sheriff has tasked us to look for the missing girl. And they kind of look at each other and narrow their eyes. Oh, that's funny. I don't recall us asking for the mayor's help. It's a silver axe business, if you see why this town's 
mayor or sheriff should have any uh, any business in it. Who are you looking for? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We're looking for Ileana Cuban. Cuban? Hang on. Let me check. Quiven. Ileana Quiven. She is the daughter of our esteemed leader. She went uh, missing a few days back. We've been searching the area, trying to find her. Uh, we were curious if any of you have run into any elven women on your travels. Nope, can't say that we have. Sure, you uh, don't recall anything curious on the road? We've been also waiting for a few scouts who have uh, also not returned members of the Silver Axe. They were somewhere to the south of here. Dust drinks for half of milk. <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> no, I haven't run into any of your friends. Sorry about that. That's a shame. Well, should you see an elven woman with blonde hair and fair skin? who answers to the name Eliana, let her know that her father is very worried about her and that the group is searching for her. We're also interested in a few individuals she may have run into. We're just concerned that she ran into the wrong group on the road and they might have murdered her. A group of four individuals. One with dark hair, one with light hair, another with red hair. As a matter of fact, a few of you fit that description. Especially you, I believe. And he points at Dusk. Sir. Sure you haven't run into a woman of this description? I have not. All in there with her eyes. I'm about... Another sentence out of your mouth away. I'm taking my friend's chocolate milk here and throwing it in your fucking face. You wouldn't. Now, no, no, we're not going to be wasting any milk. They're just looking for their friend. Not, they're concerned. They have a right to be. But, you know, multiple people in this world do happen to have red hair, blonde hair, dark hair. You know, we've already said we have not seen your girl. You're going to have to take us for a word. She could have run into anyone. It's a big world out there. True enough, true enough. Absolutely correct. Well, if you uh, happen to be, see our girl, we'll uh, keep an eye out for your girl. Thank you for your time. He stops and looks at Bishop and his smile fades and narrows his eyes at dusk. And then they turn and go back to the table. I think I might go over there and shoot that gentleman in the penis. No, you won't. You probably <laughs> missed anyway. Just get her food. Ew. Witchcraft, you are cranky when you haven't eaten. Let's remedy that, shall we? And sure enough, food comes out right around this timing with a big basket of bread as well. Um, Rez and Diz, do you... After you finish your shopping, do you purchase anything? Rez is just holding up a saddle to Diz like, eh? Eh? No! Just mule kick him out of the shop. <laughs> it would make it so much easier to carry me! <laughs> uh, okay, fine. But there's winter clothes here, and I want a tangler grenade. There's no grenade. <laughs> There's no grenade, but this I but this shop take their I know, alright? I've been meaning to finish the shop list. <laughs> well, it sure is a star ruby. No, there's no star ruby. There's basic equipment. <laughs> if it's boring, they have it. <laughs> if it's exciting, you can't. Well, they couldn't even afford it anyway. <laughs> Angler grenade doesn't have a price on it. Because it doesn't exist. It exists in front of my face, and that's all that matters. Oh my god, Eric, we're giving you that link. It is an elephant! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, for the 
was such that a solid idea. Legit, there's an elephant on the list. God, there is an elephant. There's an elephant mount on the list. Good lord. There's oh. pretty much anything you think of on that list. Uh, yeah, like a tangler grenade. There's no tangler grenades in that <laughs> Fine, then I'm taking my gold pieces and I'm leaving. You do notice that there is a case there with a scroll in it with a padlock on it. What is that? Are you interested in uh, magic, good sir? That's uh, don't have much in the way of magic, but I do have the occasional magic scroll. And what exactly might this magic scroll do? You and your excellent fucking questions. Hold on. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll me 1d30. Well, that is a scroll of identify. Well, according to the one who sold it to me. And identify, you can choose one object that you must touch throughout the casting of the spell. If it is a magic item or some other magic imbued item, you learn its properties, how to use them, whether it's required attunement to use, and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting that item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. You can instead touch a creature throughout the casting you learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. It's a ritual. So would I be able to identify like other spells, like if I were to touch another scroll or something? Um, you can usually tell what scrolls are as is. This as far as I can tell. Uh, it sounds interesting and all, but uh, how much would it be? I could let that go for sixty. That is, that is so much more than what this is actually worth. All right, how about 50? I'll give you five. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I'll give you, okay, fine. Uh, Ten. Persuasion check? Disadvantage? <laughs> nah, just regular. <laughs> I give her the wink. She kind of looks around and then she walks over to the front door and puts a latch on it and then closes the shutters. Oh, shit. And then walks around behind the counter and she pulls out a case. She had told me you were buying, buying. And she rolls up her sleeve and she shows you a tattoo with a crown with a dagger through it. She opens up the case, and inside are small vials. And what are these? Uh, these are deadly poisons. I am not a deadly rogue. Don't to be a rogue to appreciate poisons. Are you needing? Are you needing shelter? Is that what's going on here? No. Uh... Hey, I can't help but what kind of place is this exactly? Listen, I'm not exactly a, a law-abiding citizen or anything like that, okay? But that being said, I have no idea what's actually going on here, I'll be honest with you. <sighs> By the gods. You have no idea what this is, do you? Uh, I know they're poisons. She closes the case, puts it under, walks over to the door, unlatches it, opens up the shutters. Get out. Okay, well, how about the spell? Get out now. Right. It's a front for something. Come on now. And she gets in your face. You better watch it. You're pretty beautiful. I'm not going to lie. Something about elves. Your eyes are going to get scooped out in the dagger's court. Do you understand that? that I've heard that one before, actually. Yeah, it sounds pretty accurate. And your sister there. She's going to get skinned. 
and turn into boots. Now get out of my store. Not the nicest way to make a repeat customer, I just gotta say. I'm warning you, if you push it, you're gonna regret it. All right, all right, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. But wait, 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 can she at least buy the warm clothes? Because that's why we actually came here. Shh. Ten gold. Ooh, take it. Get out. You're paying for that, right, this? No, she's mean. What? But it was your idea. She's mean now. I have to go to another store. Oh God, there I is no other store. On this store. But, but if you don't pay for those, I will have you arrested. I don't want it, and I could just go to ask people on what you're selling since we saw it. Don't, don't try to snatch. intimidation check. But she's a tiny little. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Not only is she not intimidated, she says, "I see." Well, I suppose that's your decision to make. And she walks back over to the door and closes it and puts the latch on it again. Do you see what happens when you try to scare people. Mom did it easily. And she pulls out a dagger and tries to stab you, Rez. Oh, but I have Matron on, right? Did you cast it? Hang on, what happened to that request? I asked if yes. I could. I asked if you could, and you know, like you had mana. That's where it went. Okay, I was like, yeah, you asked that. I can't remember what that. Okay, so you have Mage Armor on. So she's going to make an attack roll against you. It's technically initiative. The fight that you never predict would happen. Wait, we're rolling initiative? Yeah. Cause yeah, you and, you and Rez are. You made the shopkeeper angry, so now she stab you. Okay. She um she takes a dagger out. She takes a swing at your res, and it glances off your mage armor. And she looks really confused because she didn't expect you to have some sort of magical aura over you. Oh yeah, right. I forgot. Uh, listen, I kill people for a living. It happens. It's okay. Look, this is she looks scared. <laughs> this is this is probably just a big misunderstanding, right? Uh, can you unlatch that door before I really make you regret what you just tried to do? She kind of looks around and back and forth between you. I'll make you regret it, and it's your turn, Rez. I don't want to hurt her. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll just cast a uh, firebolt at the door. Okay. Go ahead and roll your spell cast. Roll one d ten. You know what? It's crit. Um, you. <laughs> the door explodes off of its hinges. Diz, it is, and technically you can still move. So, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm gonna look at her and be like, "Okay, see, you hesitated. Really wish you didn't do that. I wouldn't have blown your door open like that. You see, we're just gonna make our way out." Hopefully, you're not after the door. Diz, it is your turn. What do you do? Oh, man. I'm sorry, what? I said, oh, man, that's a hard question. <laughs> what you made me do? <laughs> Listen, she's... She if you that. just didn't react to the way that I was threatening you and your business, I wouldn't have had to blow hey, open your door. I didn't threaten her business. My sister did. She tried to stab me for some reason. She was being, now she's just being plain not rude. She did lock the door. We were going to leave. Her over. Huh? Asking Rez, can I run her over? No, you cannot run her over. You can walk out. You can do what you want. It's America. <laughs> What's the timer on this? How long did we last in this town before shit went sideways? <laughs> An hour. 
Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Vanessa's is gonna leave. She's she's gonna just follow after. Just gallop out. I mean, is she gonna just leave? I mean, she she watches Diz just kind of gallop out, and she just like looks stunned, and then looks at you. It's it's technically her turn, and uh, she takes one more desperate swing at you. Just she's not even sure. So 13 hit you? Not That's even. Corona. And it just glances off again. And with that, she she drops the knife and backs away against her counter. I turn around and I just stare at her. Like that, just, just this psychopathic stare. There's just like nothing but just like this blank stare. If, if you kill me, the, the dagger will come after you. Who kill you? Who kill your friends? On. I mean, that's the end of the threat. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really have anything to follow that with. Who? Who? What is this dagger? Who is this dagger? Can you tell me more about him? He, he's part of the king's court. One of his knights. Does he, does he help you run this place? I, I work for him. It's a crime syndicate. I, I, I sell poisons and, and, and house assassins here. Right, right, right. Okay, well, it's a good thing I'm not, a, you know, a guard or a cop or somebody who... What is should... that? She points at your badge that she now sees. <laughs> badge? Wait, hold on a minute. What? Oh, some... <laughs> somebody pinned a tin badge to you. What the... <laughs> yeah, we're honorary sheriffs. We got a shiny little badge. Oh, this! Oh, uh, yeah. This, oh, well. Whoops. I guess I am a cop. Well, um. I, uh, I guess. You're I ain't no cop. cop. What's that? You're right. I am a cop. You're under arrest. <laughs> I guess you're under arrest. Coming to advice. Coming to agency this fall. <laughs> Look, I, you had to bring attention to that, didn't you? Okay, listen. Just, just, can you just, look, I really don't want to hurt you. I don't. Can we just settle this outside? We'll, we'll talk it over with the sheriff. The sheriff? And she, she dives across the counter and, um, you hear a, a door open and her running down the stairs Holy crap. of a secret passageway. I'm not going to chase after her. <laughs> okay. What's down there, but this whole place has pretty much just had its cover blown, so that's pretty interesting. Diz, let's go. Poke her head back in. Got that, you got that close, right? <laughs> what do you mean, don't let the children wander off on their own? I just uncovered a crime syndicate. What did you do? Get some freaking... We milk? could bring the group here. Yeah, you uncovered a, a crime syndicate and yet did nothing about it. I'm about to. I'm just trying to leave right now. Get some. Except probably, you know, entice their wrath and bring death and dismay upon us all. So thanks. Hey, hey that's what adventuring's all about, girl. Meanwhile, back at the tavern and <laughs> restaurant. We're heading back to, by the way. Um, you Stay see. Away. You see the sheriff running across out the window, running across town. Yeah, did you know. we hear the explosion? Yeah, you, you heard a you heard a pop like near the end of your meal. I don't get the feeling that is the brother and sisters. This is what happens when you let teenagers wander off on their own. <sighs> she looks sadly at her meal. Are we done eating? You're mostly done eating, yeah. What did I eat? What did you have? <laughs> did you want a steak? I don't know if that was on the menu, but yes. It was, yeah. Get a nice bloody steak. Thank God. Alright. And Bishop puts money on it. I'll cover it since I owe you a dinner. And he winks at Bronwyn. Let's go spank the kids. Come on. <laughs> oh. 
Don't say it like that. She's like, oh, wait a minute, why, why do they get all the fun? <laughs> <laughs> Witchcraft, you have issues, and I don't want to know about them. Yeah, you do. I love her. The silver I love axe. That. The silver axe gets up as well, and as you walk outside, you see Rez and Diz like jaunting away from the general store towards you and the sheriff. The sheriff meets uh, Diz and Rez part of the way. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, maybe you found out where the kid was went is you know maybe something related to that that's amazing are you serious uh, i don't know yet let's find out the silver egg runs up we have whoa, 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 whoa. see i knew it she's got one of them uh animal bodies like she's the one who discovered it what are you talking about i'm Animals sorry who invited accents. you here she's i'm at fighting the my accent That's exactly the kind of stuff we was worried about. See, you have these animal people blowing up your town using their magics. I excuse me, hold on. I blew up that door. Oh, and, and how is this girl uh, related to you? Uh, are you are you siblings? We we are siblings. The the legs are not natural. I this happens. Every That's time. right. It's very unnatural. That's the first thing you made a bit of sense this entire time. Oh, She's gosh. lichen folk. They're not natural. She's lichen deer. I don't know how she got around the silver test, but she must have some sort of immunity. Look a lichen down there. Uh, deception. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody where? And they all turn away. <laughs> Just went behind the knotted hill open market, those poor people. They look back at you and they narrow their eyes and the sheriff says, I don't want to see you six. In my presence right now. This is not a lichen problem. I'm handling it with people who have been officially conscripted by the town, i.e., not you. Why don't you go back to the tavern or go back to whichever place you're staying at and let professionals hand this, okay? Go pass out a pamphlet or something. Bye. He yeah, yeah, with his eyes and walks through the walkway. Six are hung out at them as they walk away. The silver axe six, or like six. yeah, the silver axe six, okay. yeah. <laughs> Bishop Bronwyn, Dusk, and Lala approach. What on earth have you done? Uh, well, Diz bought some clothes for Dusk. Yeah, so. Why don't we get to the part where there is an explosion? Oh, yeah. A uh, general store woman tried to kill us after trying to sell us drugs, and we said we weren't interested. Mentioned that we were cops. She wasn't too happy about that. Ran off behind some kind of secret entrance door uh, after we blew up the door that she tried to, you know, block us in with. Because she was trying to do the whole murdering stuff. And the sheriff just puts his hands over his face. So let me get this straight. Anna Kelly, who has been a resident of this town for the past five years, tried to sell you drugs. After you turned her down, she tried to kill you and then escaped through a secret passageway. Well, no, not I exactly. It was poison. It was poison. Yeah, it, it's it's a whole crime syndicate thing going on. Mostly. Oh yeah, and they house assassins. Did you have one of your fainting spells again? Are you sure you didn't just dream this, wake up in an unfamiliar area, and freak out? That's, that's pretty offensive. I'm going to have to let you know that one. That's kind of offensive. Yeah, you know how it feels now, huh? No, not really. I mean, that's, that's I'm just asking. Part. That's a very convoluted story. Can we just go back to the general story so that everyone can see that I'm not insane? All right. Well, let's go see what you did. You go there, and sure enough, um, behind the counter is a trap door that leads to a set of stairs. What on earth? All right, everybody be careful. Let's go down there, one at a time. Just be prepared for anything. Okay, you go first. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll do that. The sheriff kind of steps down and steps down into this um, underground area. And sure enough, underneath here are several cots. And on the end of each cot is a footlocker. And there's candles uh, burning in little alcoves on the walls themselves, a table, um, a small rack with knives, and, uh, and a small safe as well. And at the end of this room is another wooden door. I'll be darned. By the god, she had this whole place down here. Said she was housing assassins here? That's what she said. And sells poison to them. You said crime syndicate. Did you mention what crime, or did she mention what crime syndicate it was? Uh, look at rest. I don't remember. <laughs> was you it can make court? an intelligence check. No, she'll ask. That's the only crime syndicate we were made aware of. Yeah. So she'll just straight up ask. Was it That's the right. court? Was it the court? Intelligence check. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn teenagers pay attention to nothing. <laughs> Um, it was the court. More specifically, Dagger's Court. Right, Dagger's Court. Yeah, boy. That figures. Alright, well, um, I'm going to investigate here. Why don't you why don't you sex check out that door and see where it leads? Should I go down first or oh, ten piece grow pair. Bishop walks over, opens up the door, points his gun down uh, through the entrance, and there is a essentially a tunnel leading down with torches along the way. Well then, look at that. A tunnel. Shall we see where it leads? I suppose we should. All right, ten pieces. Your discovery. You could take a hit. Why don't you go first? Uh, Maybe. Uh, all right, all right. I'll just I'll head down first. I'll start. Uh, is it like how dark is it? Is it, is it lit up or? It's lit up. There's torch light. Okay. Torches look freshly lit. You head down the tunnel, which seems to go for a few minutes, a couple twists and turns, until you come to a ladder. You're going down? Going up to a trap door. After you, and she motions to Rez. I'll be so excited. It's your discovery. You're the one who blew the case wide open, as one could say, so take lead. God, you sound like you wish I didn't. <laughs> I wish you hadn't made an explosion in the middle of a town that we just arrived to. There's a sort of, you know, there's Actually, a way to do these things, yeah, Rez. Yeah, Matt, jeez. Regardless, you two are not going off alone ever again if this is the kind of stuff you're going to be pulling. <laughs> You're babysitting witchcraft. I ain't getting in the middle of that. Do you, Who heads up the ladder? I will head up the ladder. Okay. Climb your way up, up the ladder. And... Come to the trap door right above your head, made of wood. Do you push it open? Sorry. Is that a yes? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You push it open. The smell of iron and steel and coal and fire can be smelled. And you're in what looks like 
some sort of blacksmith shop. Is it the same one that Dusk was in? Depends. Does Rez go all the way to the top so others can see? Uh, no, I'll just say that it looks like some kind of blacksmith shop. Is there anyone around? Is I it... look around. You don't see anybody. Not that I can see. Dust starts to go up the ladder. Just push it on his butt. Move! Yeah. <laughs> Rez, I need to see! Fine, then I'll move up. <laughs> Since he said it was the coast was clear. Mm hmm Does everybody go up to the top? Okay. And you arrive at the top, you climb out, and you're in the blacksmith shop. The door is still closed. And you hear the floorboards boards creak above you in the loft. That's really weird. Shh. Is everybody sneaking? Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, was the blacksmith shop two floors? Yeah. There's a loft up there. Everybody make a stealth check if you're being sneaky, sneaky. So much for the shadow, my god. I'm just gonna say I'm standing there. Clip clop, clip clop, Lala going, ooh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and Dust doing unnecessary tumbles to act like a ninja costume. But ciao! She's humming her own like Mission Impossible. I was, I was gonna say, it's like Crunk <laughs> from Nimbus New Cruise. Yes! I hate the um, guy so much. You hear footsteps, boot on wood, walking across the loft towards the stairs. A step down, a step down, a step down. You see, coming from these steps, an individual, there we go. Coming from these steps, uh, black boots and black pants. And as it rounds around the forge, it's Ravinius. And he looks blank-faced at all of you. Raven? And he looks at you, Dusk. Has no expression on his face. Do, do, do you know him? That's, that's, that's my brother. That's one of the siblings I'm missing. Uh. Raven? And he takes a step forward towards you and he leans in and narrows his eyes and then looks over at Rez and at Diz. Diz, believe it or not, you can climb ladders. Okay, <laughs> I, was gonna say, I was wondering. Was yeah, I looked at Centaur like, oh, by the way, this is her climb speed. And yes, they can climb. It's like, thank goodness. That seems so unfair. Yeah, that's why I'm like, if I'm able to yeah. follow, I will. Yeah. And Raven gets really close to Rez and looks at him just face to face. And then he gets very close to his lips. It's a little it's a little too close there, man. And suddenly his face splits open like a seam and his head melts around it as it attempts to envelop you. It's initiative. What in the fuck? Kisses. No more making fun of my siblings anymore. Please stop trying to ship my brother with yours. Although this is clearly, hopefully, hope to God, not my brother. Let's see what we got here. Uh, 
is Bishop. We're going to start with um, Senior Melty Head. And Diz. Diz, um, you're attempting to be grappled. You can make an acrobatics check or an athletics check. Diz? No, I'm sorry, Rez. You managed to dodge out of the way as his head, which is essentially now this long tendrils of liquid head, grasp around as if it's a couple of fingers trying to grasp a hold of you like a Venus flytrap before it forms back to his face again. And it is Diz's turn. Diz. Diz is going to look at Dusk like, is, is he supposed to do that? That's, is, I don't think that's my brother. I hope to God it ain't. Your brother's fucking weird! <laughs> it's like, is there something you want to tell us? That is not normal. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really feeling like holding back right now. Yeah, can, do, do we have permission? He might Don't just... have permission, fucking shoot! It's just using his image, kill it. I hope I'm right. Imagine you're not, though. I know! Yeah, sorry, bro, I'm gonna need to ask her permission. <laughs> <laughs> that is all sorts of unnatural. She's just gonna She's fire gonna, away. Mind, I'm nice enough to ask for permission. Remember that. Uh, gonna gonna poke the the res for a guidance. Poke. Okay, go ahead and post it. Post the guidance. Guidance. Uh, Rez, you now have Guidance on you. It's 1d4. Uh, add to the number rolled ability to check before the cat, before I announce whether or not it's a fail. Okay. okay. And that's going to be Bishop, followed by Bronwyn. So Bronwyn, ready your action. Uh, Bishop draws both of his pistols and starts shooting. And no one was accidentally shot in the ass. Yeah, this is gonna like jump. <laughs> oh, this is not favorite enemy. Whoops. Turn on favorite enemy. Okay. So Bishop fires two shots at it. Um, both holes kind of open up uh, in his chest and slowly start to close back. But he kind of twists his head around and looks at Bishop. And he starts moving his mouth bah, 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 and making this really weird kind of crazy noise, like a rudimentary language or just trying to make noise. Bah, 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 bah. That, is, no, that like, is demoralizing. It's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. And when he does it, his mouth doesn't move. His entire top of his head kind of comes a little unhinged a bit. And it's not forming... Uh, what you would say, you know, concise. That's fucking horrifying thing. <laughs> kind of speaking. And it's going to be Bronwyn followed by Dusk. Bronwyn, what you do? I don't want that thing coming anywhere near me. <laughs> no, wait, it's fine next to me, no. Cause fear. Okay, interesting. All right, the spell has no limitations that I see that would affect it. Okay. Um, so you, do you want to describe your casting of fear? No. Okay. <laughs> you, uh, you essentially take your wand out and, um, oh no, you don't even need to do that. You lean forward, your eyes turn this inky black and you kind of tilt your head down and, and narrow your eyes and you whisper, boo, and it echoes. And he just kind of looks at you and he, his eyes turn black. 
again, his head is twisted around 180 degrees. Sorry if I didn't describe that. And he goes, <laughs> kind of opening his mouth, sticking out his tongue. It is now going to be dusk, followed by Rez. I think so, he's scared. So, since she has a potion in place of the claws, can I use Neurodemus' discarded sword that she carried for a dagger attack instead? <gasps> what? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Not. God, she does not want to go after this thing. What are you waiting for? Just do it! <laughs> Bishop's freaking out. Your brother's being fucking weird! I'm gonna try two of these. Oh no. <laughs> well, Just it makes sense. Rest. It's not used to using the sword. But... You, um. <laughs> You flick your dagger out, but you're kind of closing your eyes and um, r roll roll you can one d six. Say she's bad at it. Not that she's closing her eyes. Roll one d six. Basically, Riz took more damage from his friends than his enemies. You catch Bishop. <laughs> you stab and you like hit Bishop in between the ribs. He's like, oh, what in the fuck? I wasn't the one who burned your butt. Why? Accidents happen, Bishop. <laughs> yeah. Um. So if you're making two daggers attack, that is um, that's a two weapon attack. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to do martial arts and dagger I, and martial arts? I'm trying to avoid putting my actual skin oh. on this thing. Okay. Um. So the second attack. Hits. Go ahead and roll one d4. It's just one d4. Since it's your offhand, you don't get your your dex modifier with it with two weapon fighting unless you have a feat well, or it's, a fighting it's style. It's just one weapon, so I'm just using that one weapon a second time. Because it's use. She's using Nero's sword. Remember when she said she grabbed Nero's sword on the way out? Okay, so you can't do that as your martial art weapon. You can do a martial. You can do a weapon in a martial art or double martial art. Well, I was that saying in sense. place of, since she doesn't have her claws, because she has the potion right now. She has no claws. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the first attack hit Bishop, so your yeah. second attack must be martial arts or a second dagger. So Because that's your martial art feature. Attack? No. <laughs> you're, you're, you, so you can't the sword can't twice. replace a dagger. It's two totally different weapons, is what he's and, saying. But what I'm saying is that a weapon cannot replace a martial art move. Twice. It can only do it once. So two martial arts or a weapon and a martial art. Then I guess I don't attack a second time. Okay. I'm not, I'm not touching it. <laughs> That's fine. You don't have to. Uh, so Bishop's going to take that four. No, he's taking that one. That one damage. Oh, yeah. I guess he would be taking that one damage. Uh, plus your I thought, I thought the one was for who it hit. Oh, it was. It is. It is for that hit. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Bronwyn. Hey, you Thank can't you. be biased as a rules lawyer, okay? No, I can't. So Bishop's like, the fuck? <laughs> and it's going to be Rez's I'm turn. Sorry, I'm a little shaken. Followed by Lala. So Rez... What is your action, Lala? Ready your action. I'm just gonna whip out the the sword whip, and I'm just gonna try to slice it across its face. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll to attack. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. You slice through his face, and I want you to imagine a jello mold of a person. Just like when you cut right into it, it just kind of flops off, wiggling. So that's what it is. And the interior of him is flesh-colored rather than, you know, having blood and guts. It's just, just kind of flesh-colored. So now his top half of his head is wiggling around like jello, And he's kind of moving around, starting to flail and, and freak out. Yeah, that's gross. Lala, what is your, what is your action? Fuck it. Fuck huh? it. Firebolt. 
Okay. You f- twirl your hammer around, point it at him, and go ahead and uh, roll your spell cast. Click on your spell cast. Diz, you're going to be coming up after the slime. Fire would be a good way to keep us from stabbing and shooting each other. Uh, hold on, I gotta find it. There right, it we need to literally put a flare on it. This is the target, guys. <laughs> this is the target, not each other. <laughs> Fuck. All right, uh, that's a hit. I want you to go ahead and manually roll one d ten, if you please. Take that. Okay. Uh, a burst of flame, a, a f- essentially a flaming hammer, uh, hits the creature in, in the arm and causes its shoulder to kind of burst. And now it's even more floppy. It becomes more jelly and squiggly the more you hit it and attack it. And it is going to be its turn. It takes its floppy arm and its floppy head and kind of merges them together into this large pseudopod that's kind of flesh color and twisted. Um... It, the dimensions of, it, of his clothing, his hair, and his face are kind of now stretched as if it was silly putty or if it was a sculpture of Play-Doh that you had together and you start twisting and mixing it together. It whips around trying to hit three of you at the same time in a sweeping blow. No, don't touch. Okay. No touchy. I don't want to press my luck, but the last time it tried to hit multiple people, I was able to use Sentinel. Is that something I can do again or no? I'm going to say yes, just for the lack of I don't want to look up whether or not a sweeping attack counts as <laughs> somebody attacking within five feet. I mean, on paper, it says, it's, a count. It's, it's basic. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a creature within five feet if he makes an attack against another tar- a target other than you. 15, and it's going to be hitting uh, Diz, Rez, and Bronwyn. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't hit me. Rez, you managed to block it with your sword. Diz, does a 15 hit your armor class? Yes. Okay. And Bronwyn, does it hit your armor class? <laughs> you just quietly nod to it. Quietly nod. Okay, well. I'm squishy. I can't Ooh. help it. Oh my god. Damn, bro. Dang. Uh, the. Bronwyn and Diz get knocked back into the countertops and tables where tools and stuff start falling to the ground. A mouth in his shoulder opens up and starts <laughs> screaming. Just like sword whip. Sword. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to parry that and then just like sword. I'm going to crack that sword into a whip and slice it across that face that just opened on its shoulder. Okay. You slice into it. Uh, Diz, it is your turn. Wait, can I take damage? You did. You took 12 points of damage. Uh, Jaisa. Um, how's our lock and lock looking? Time for everyone to stay back. <laughs> How is the warlock doing? Bronwyn, do you have anything to comment? Do you have a comment for the audience? Uh, yeah, she's just, re- she's not looking too hot. <laughs> Kind of like hands on her knees, trying real hard not to look like she just got her shit kicked in, but she definitely did. Oh my god. You're right, witchcraft. Peachy clean. Super don't look like it. Get up and cast some nasty shit. Come on. <laughs> wow. On oh, now block. you want the spells. Oh. And as for you, turns back and looks at Dusk. Do you need dust back? Do I need what? You oh, left I'll, I'll just, yeah. I didn't leave it in there. <laughs> it's a one. I get to make that call. <laughs> Hand you back the dagger so you can use it. It's a, it's a short sword, not a dagger. No, it's a short sword. Mm. Like, do you want this? Yes. Back? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. <laughs> Those are my brothers. Was it this one? Was he also made of jelly? <laughs> <laughs> no! 
terrible. Are you made of None jelly? of them are made of jelly. Okay, just making sure. Made of jelly and stabbing everybody. I don't know what this is. Okay, casting your spell. It's going to be two mana. And who are you casting that on, Diz? Our, our lucky luck, who is looking not too great, but you know, she's playing off like a champ. Okay. 1d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier, Diz, which I believe is three. So 1d8 plus three. Ooh. Yeah, very nice. So that's going to be a lovely, uh, well, a 11 points healing. Bronwyn? Bronwyn just got to experience what I feel like it is to be a tank in World of Warcraft, where you're like something just bashes you down to one health, and then you get brought brought, brought back to full health. So it's like this roller. You're not done yet. Get yeah. the fuck up. Just this roller coaster of agony that you get forced back into for more. DPS fucker. <laughs> Let's go. I want to run this two more times tonight. <laughs> yeah, she'll like pop back up and oh, see. Told you I was fine. She'll like. Thank you, Des. Thank you so much. She's gonna do like two thumbs up silently. Honor's mark. All right, and it is going to be Bishop's turn. Bishop is going to shoot again. And again. To track his ammo. And. Two more shots ring out. Two more holes open up. It screams once more. Bronwyn, it is your turn, followed by Dusk. I'm going to assume no one's in my way. There's no one in your way. She Ooh. mad. <laughs> you hold out your hands. Do you want to describe your spell? Uh... Yeah, she just looks pissed and she stands up and she holds her hands out the way that you're supposed to and just, like a fucking flamethrower, just <laughs> <laughs> It just it just singes my little ponytail and like, yeah. Desk, you see the twisted form of your brother scream as all these tiny tentacle pseudopods start sticking out and flailing about as the whole thing is engulfed in flames. Uh... <laughs> Dex saving throw. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage as normal. It did not go well. <laughs> okay. And uh, flailing about, it finally falls against the table behind it and starts... Looks like it's melting backwards. All this liquid starts spilling out from it that's flaming on a fire, kind of like if you had, I don't know, candle paraffin just spilling on the ground and slowly melts away as the image of its clothing, its face, and any details turns to nothing. I think it's dead. What in the hell was that? What the fuck is your family? <laughs> Not that. I scared. promise you not that. Turn to my family and go check on freaking Dizzy real quick or she's already like one step from dying. I'm good. You don't look good. I'm Are you good. sure you're good? You, you say that a lot. I will like throw her up. arms around her and give her a big hug. Thank you. She's just gonna maybe, be maybe smush your face in, in, the, in the bosom a bit. Yeah, uh, she's tall. Fine. I feel like that's the <laughs> height that it would be at. Just gonna like glare at Bronwyn, just, <laughs> just like stare at her. Like, this is sorry. Turn the same we're, shade as her hair. I'm sorry. You you were, you were saying what about the twins? Verdict is still out on you, but she's okay. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just I'm just gonna let I'm just you know what next time I'm just gonna let them go after her. I'm just not even gonna stand in the way. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you. Everybody, calm down for a minute. That is like no mimic I've ever seen. I've never seen a mimic mimic a person. I mean, they they can't by nature. I don't think. I 
Desk, are you all right? Gooey? Where did it get my brother's image? Maybe it saw him or something. Just so weird. It tried to talk to us, I think. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't what? That. I don't want to think of the idea of maybe he was in there trying to say something. No, 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 no. 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 It was mimicking what we were saying. It wasn't. I don't think it was trying to communicate. It just did what we were doing. Look, that that thing couldn't have been your brother, all right? Now, if um, if I know anything about strange creatures, so usually you'll find some piece of them in there, and then this is all just soup now, and you kind of kick at it. Is it just soup? It's not wiggling around or nothing. Nope, it's just like melting, like melted ice cream. Lala, what you make of this? I've never seen anything like it. It's weird. Just don't touch it. The sheriff comes running across after I heard more explosions. Oh, gosh, the smell. What is that? It does smell quite a bit. What does it smell like? Can I sniff? Sulfur. All right. That's gross. So in a blackness shop, sulfur. But it's more kind of coming from the pile of ugh. The pile of yuck. The bucket of yuck. Gross. Was, was that some sort of monster? I think it was something, all right. You see that the silver axe has also arrived, but they're keeping their distance, and they're kind of looking in the doorway. Bishop looks at him and like taps his revolver. And, you want some of this? Flips him off. All, all, all right. So, the, where's Rolf? Who? The blacksmith, Rolf. Where's Rolf? Can I head towards the stairs? Mm-hmm. He he lives up here, right? Yeah. Desk, I don't know if you want to go up there by yourself. Oh, fine, I'll come with you. Backwoods girl. No one, no one asked you to come with me. Well, common sense says you shouldn't go alone into a creepy loft, all right? Especially since that's where that came from. I, I wasn't going up there. Well, fine, one of us has had to go up there. I'm going up there. Well, now you can't go alone, so someone's got to come with you. Well, then fine, come with me already. Insufferable. Worst painting. Rez is just like watching between the two of them, like his eyes just like ping ponging back and forth. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is Bishop that? goes up. Do you go up? Anybody else go up? I'm sorry, Lala, what did you say? No, no, you can keep going. Okay. Lala's like, fuck no. Goodbye. <laughs> Rez is just gonna stay by Dizzy. Poor Diz. Uh, Dusk, when you arrive up there with Bishop, you find a big red mass um, and the bottom half of the blacksmith. You could tell by the um, remainder of his apron, the top half of his body is missing. Oh. Sorry, my brain went immediately to uh, Among Us. <laughs> no. Some bone sticking out like a ham. <laughs> red looking kind of sus. <laughs> I think Bronwyn is sus. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> well, I reported. I wasn't self-reporting. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. Well, I think we found the blacksmith. What's left of him? It's just a body. There's nothing else. Or half mm -mm. a body. Half a body. Yeah. Can I? Investigate the wounds. Yeah. You make an investigation check. You can make a medicine check, actually. Could Lala or Diz come up here, please? I'm not sure what to make of it. Oh. It's gross. Lala, what do you make of this? 
Lala, you see a, a half devoured body. Hey, oh. oh, that's a. Uh... It's not what I was expecting. Um, did she do a medicine check through? Yep. Okay. Um, well, he's dead. Uh, his, the remaining half of his body looks like it was just cut, like chopped in half. So it's like a clean... I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. It's more mauled away. Like chewed? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of... Something ate him. You wouldn't think it was that thing from downstairs, would it? I mean, that thing grew a mouth and its shoulder. It tried to eat Rez's... Did anybody else notice how it completely bypassed me, despite looking like my brother, and went straight for those two? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Something pretty suspicious about those twins. Let's go head back downstairs and see if they know anything. Everybody says. Rez, what makes you so special? That that thing would want to try to eat your head and ignore the sister. What? What makes you so special? That no, that it, thing wanted to eat your head. It it was it was a rhetorical question. Are you are you suspecting me of something because it tried to kill me? No, I'm not. I'm trying to put this all together. We're trying why? To figure out why you're a victim? Not obviously not working with it. It tried to eat you. I don't know. I mean, I I guess I'm the one who. Uh pissed off the shopkeeper and technically followed her all the way to here? You have magical wings that seem to try to explode out your butt. Your sister. Is, is it his back? It's your back, I right? That makes more sense. I'm glad it's your back. It is my yeah. And you randomly fall asleep. And you haven't quite been forthcoming as to what exactly that magical item in that magical place with some angel that you mentioned. I know we got all have a little bit of secrets, but um I don't. And Bishop looks at desk. Yeah, we'll see about that. What, so I have to spell everything out because a monster tried to kill me in particular? Doesn't it get exhausting questioning everybody and being suspicious of every little thing, Bishop? It does for me. Maybe it was just the hair, you know? Sometimes that shit happens with animals. They see something brightly colored and they go straight for it. I mean, she does have a point. That is how a prey drive works. Well, I ain't trying to turn this no inquisition. Sorry, Rez, I didn't mean nothing by it. Just... I think we're all a little this. shaken up because that was the strangest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Do, yeah. Does anyone know what that could have been? Maybe it's something related with the shopkeeper and that whatever they're hiding under the basement. Well, if the King's Court has things like that, they are much more trouble than I initially thought. Which means Very maybe they know something about my family. Because that was my brother down to every detail of clothing and the items he carries. But he it wasn't. Alright? Let's make that super clear. Right? That wasn't your brother. Alright? He wasn't in there. Just You know, God's willing, it just happened to see him, you know, passing by and thought he made a pretty picture. Wanted to, you know, replicate that. Mimics do that all the time. Who's still there? Yeah, it's mostly melted and kind of this purplish color. Would an art check tell me anything about it? Sure. It's not. Um, it seems like some kind of ooze. Dizzy, come here, touch this. Huh? You're making make your sister touch it. Dizzy, come here, touch this. What do you think of this? No, don't make her touch it. 
she maybe she knows more about it than I do because right well, now. Well, but can she just like, look at it? Maybe maybe sniff it. Why does she have to touch it? Yeah, don't. She's gonna touch it, poke it with something. We have a lot of stuff in this building. What? Right? Yeah, just grab a sword or something and poke at it. Don't don't. Put your fingers in that mess. Puts away her body I, sword. It, it's already in my hand. It's literally, I just like, I'm going to hold it up to Bronwyn's face. Look, it's right here. <laughs> you oh, get it, pick it up. Get it away. It's not, it's not gelatinous enough. It just kind of runs through your fingers. But that was just a, a smelly liquid. Does it leave a residue or does it roll right off? Um, It kind of leaves a little bit of a residue. And, you know, it's thicker than water. Um, it's more like mercury? It's more like syrup. Ugh. So a lot of residue. It's like stuck to his fingers. A bit, yeah. It's absolutely foul. And she like hides behind Bishop. Like that's gross. Get away from me. Cash, are you ever an adventurer? Pinches his side or puts her finger in his stab wound. Quit being an ass. <laughs> it is it is like no ooze you've read about? You've seen oozes change shape, hold still. You know move through cracks and walls. Um, the very few oozes can mimic things. Most of the time they mimic puddles of water or, you know, really wet stones that are very round. But that's it. You've never seen one change its color in such a way or read about one that's changed its color in such a way. I, I don't know. This hasn't been covered in anything I've read. And I read a lot. Wow. All right. Well, I'm just gonna wipe this off on the on the floor. Yeah, I'm not touching it too now. No more yet. Well, here's a real question: Is that what happened to Juniper? Did she get eaten like, well, like the bar the blacksmith? Maybe so. It wasn't done eating. Did we catch it at a bad time? Maybe. But I don't like to think what it'll do next. And... Wait. What if there's more than one? I don't want to think about that either. Well, we gotta find evidence of whether or not this is what killed Juniper. Should we go to... Where she disappeared? Because I said there's footprints outside her window. Maybe. Maybe we can use that and... I don't know. Track her? Dusk pokes where she stabbed him. Sorry. But that is where we're going to stop. For right now. Yay! Gross monster! That was gross. <laughs> Unsettling. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hate this campaign. <laughs> <laughs>